finally today, let me hip you to something that got a lot of attention over the weekend. It's not really a news story per se, but let's just say a lot of folk in Silicon Valley have woken up and decided that GPT-3 might herald the beginnings, the stirrings perhaps, of a next big thing in tech. Let me give you some background. OpenAI is an AI research foundation started by Elon Musk, Sam Altman, as well as a who's who of big names in things like machine learning. GPT-3 is OpenAI's text-generating AI that debuted about a month ago and is a language model trained with 175 billion parameters. It's a successor to the previous GPT-2, which had only one and a half billion parameters. In short, remember how we've discussed on the show before how AI can't really read, can't really speak, and that's sort of holding it back? Yeah, well, this is from an essay by Delian Asparuhoff that's been getting passed around all weekend. Delian has been playing with GPT-3, and let's just say he was impressed. Quote, GPT-3 is essentially a context-based generative AI. What this means is that when the AI is given some sort of context, it then tries to fill in the rest. If you give it the first half of a script, for example, it will continue the script. Give it the first half of an essay, it will generate the rest of the essay. I fed it half of an essay on how to run effective board meetings, and it effing wrote up a three-step process on how to recruit board members that I should honestly now put into my damn original essay. Both times, the AI was able to generate cogent, although not always correct, additional paragraphs, and in both examples, was able to follow the prior formatting, i.e. section headers and steps. What's incredible about the tool is that you can feed it almost any context, a script about a gay couple in Italy, an interview between two tech luminaries, or even a political column about an election, and it is able to put together decently coherent arguments. Now, before you get too excited, this isn't some sort of general AI, and the machine doesn't really have a way of understanding if what it is outputting is true or not. The simplest way to explain how it works is that it analyzes a massive sample of text on the internet and learns to predict what words come next in a sentence or given prior context. Based on the context you give it, it responds to you with what it believes is the statistically most likely thing based on learning from all this text data. This is a strategy that OpenAI and other researchers have been pursuing for quite some time by starting off with a simple problem like trying to predict the next word in a sentence. We have now steadily built up to where they are today, where a model like GPT-3 can complete several paragraphs or more. Though an incredible result, even GPT-3 at some point may lose direction and wander aimlessly. Despite its massive size, over 175 billion parameters, as mentioned, it still may struggle with keeping a long-term destination in mind or holding logical, consistent context over many paragraphs. This means, in my opinion, although there's debate on this, that while this tool is very impressive and GPT-4 will likely show further improvements, there are probably diminishing marginal returns to this approach. They can keep getting better at running really complicated statistics on all the text people have ever written, but the AI is still not capable of reasoning, end quote. Okay, so maybe the AI is not reading and writing just yet, but it has gotten really good at tricking us into believing it's reading and writing. Actually, there's another link towards the bottom of the show notes where Kevin Lacker gave GPT-3 a Turing test. It didn't pass exactly, though, if you had run this test maybe 10 years ago, it would have fooled a lot of people. And the overall results were interesting. I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but I think I can sum up this story by saying this type of AI has made a leap that is exciting a lot of people, because at the very least, this sort of thing should lead to way, way, like generationally way better voice assistants. And aside from that, there are some interesting possibilities for things like coding and design. Also in the show notes, there are two tweets with live video from Sharif Shamim, where first, he wrote a sentence describing what Google's homepage should look like, and GPT-3 generated the code that generated an actual nearly identical Google homepage. Then he built a functioning React app by, again, just describing what he wanted GPT-3 to do, and it generated it, all of the code. There's been a bunch of debate and pushback on all of this. Sam Altman himself tweeted over the weekend, 
The GPT-3 hype is way too much. It's impressive, thanks for the nice compliments, but it still has serious weaknesses and sometimes makes very silly mistakes. AI is going to change the world, but GPT-3 is just a very early glimpse. We have a lot to still figure out, end quote. But as Paul Graham tweeted also this weekend, hackers are fascinated by GPT-3, and to everyone else it seems like a toy. Pattern seem familiar to anyone, end quote.